Hello, everyone, and welcome to Your Health in Your Hands. I'm Dr. David Atubade with the Brain and Body Foundation. Now, September is the sickle cell disease month, or sickle cell disorder month. I think we're supposed to use the word disorder these days. But September is the Worldwide Sickle Cell Disease Disorder Month. And we are going to have a couple of shows for you uh, as regards to that. As you know, as you know, the Nigerian government has authorized and deputized and indeed mandated us to address sickle cell disease in Nigeria. As you know, also, Nigeria is number one in the world, not only in terms of numbers, but in terms of severity. The problem is still this over... 100,000, we have 150,000 being born every year, over 100,000 die before their fifth birthday, 50 to 75 percent. That is a tragedy that should not be, especially with all the smart doctors, smart healthcare professionals, smart people in that country, in our country. We should not let this continue to happen. So part of what we're doing under the authority, like I said, of the government, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to kick off a research project. In, we're hoping to do in uh, three hospitals in three, three states, Abuja, Lagos, and Ikiti. Ikiti being my state of origin. Uh, it seems only fitting that we do it we, we do it there. We're still pushing. If you know anybody in the Ministry of Health at Ikiti State, please reach out to them. We're trying to get this thing going. Thankfully, Lagos State has agreed. Thank you, Health Commissioner. And thank you, Dr. Akin Shetter of the National Sickle Cell Foundation, who has been helping us with getting this on, on, on the road. So hopefully in September, we'll get it done. And of course, we're looking to Abuja to get it done as well. The end game, the end goal is that doctors who, and healthcare professionals, nurses and so on, who are treating children with sickle cell anemia, sickle cell disorder, include, and this is, and we're very strong about this. We've been working, about, working on this now for about four years now. Include as part of the routine medications supplements that will help to strengthen their immune system. We have proven this over and over and over in our centers that simply strengthening the immune system of these kids, especially those below the age of six, can significantly, significantly improve their health and of course address that terrible number of 50 to 75% dying before the age of five. So we, that's what we're aiming for. But that's not the only thing we're doing when it comes to sickle cell disease. We're also raising funds to get supplements so we can give to those in the remote areas. Now, over here in the US, we are partnered with an organization called Sac Tackle Sickle Cell and also Embrace Kids Foundation. We're working with twins. They are in the National Football League, not soccer, but football. Uh, they're extremely wealthy, uh, but they are, they, they died, their aunt died of sickle cell disease. So it's been a passion for them to help to support uh, individuals with sickle cell disease. So they're going to match our funding, our fundraising uh, up to the tune of 25,000. So we have potentially, we can raise 50,000 to buy supplements and nutritional supplements and nutraceuticals for individuals in remote areas. And of course, probably the most important thing that we're doing is the whole education, which is kind of like what we're doing on TV now. Of course, we're on Instagram and the other social media platforms giving out tips, working with other healthcare professionals, working with other parents and um, pro health um, care providers of individuals with sickle cell disorder. And as a matter of fact, on our show today, we have one of such people. I'll introduce to her briefly, and then she'll say a, little, a few three more things about herself. Uh, she is the parent of a nine-year-old son who has sickle cell disorder, and she's had a, one, a very interesting journey trying to take care of him. Um, we're also, she's also going to be talking about how tips and how parents like her, especially in Nigeria and around the world who have kids with sickle cell disorder, can better take care of their kids. So it is with great honor and pleasure that I welcome on the show, Fumi Vanessa Ulam. Welcome to the show, Fumi. Thank you very much, Dr. David. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, the introduction was really inspiring to know that uh, you have been able to gain the support and the allies of such influential people so far. Um, really, as the mother of a child with sickle cell, all we want is for to know that people are there to help us. So um, thank you for your work. It's, uh, it's truly an honor to be part of this discussion. 
Um, so I'd just like to introduce myself um, and, and say my name is Fumi. Um, I am the mother of a, a nine-year-old um, boy. He has sickle cell, um, SS. And um, so I'm currently based in, in London in the UK. Um, I, I'm the mum of two, actually. So Eli is my firstborn. Um, for me, when I received the diagnosis, uh, I have to say it changed our world um, completely turned everything around and um, to this day I can remember that feeling you know being in the consultant's office um, and being given the diagnosis um, I it has to be one of the hardest moments of my life because I had heard of sickle cell but I I didn't know enough um, and I believe that as well you know I, I wasn't aware until actually I was pregnant. I had the sickle cell trait. So um, I was suddenly thrown into a world that I, I was not prepared for. Um, and I think being a mother as well, you know, a, a mother to your first child, it's a journey that no one can prepare you for. Um, there's no manual for, for, for a new mom, but even harder, there's no manual for um, the mother of a child with, with sickle cell. Um, so immediately, I remember I, I just burst into tears in the in the office um, of the consultant, and I I just didn't know where to turn, what to do, what to think. Um, and I remember my mother was with me at the time, and she said, "You know, don't cry." And um, you know the the, the the Nigerian spirit of um, my mother, where you are about. Um, so it was like, you know, don't cry. So immediately, I just um, began to think, okay, all right. I'm not going to let this thing drown us. Uh, you know, you can either sink or you swim. So I right. think in that moment, I decided that, okay, I need to know everything about sickle cell. Um, I need to ensure that he has the best quality of life um, that I could give him, you know. So, um, so I left the office. Obviously, I was afraid. Um, but one thing with me is I always try as much as possible to be um, positive about the situation. Now, what I knew about sickle cell is that it's very different for every, every person. You know, I, there are people that may never have a crisis and there are some that are, you know, crisis all the time. So I decided that I would, um, I would think of the way forward for my son, um, you know, the best way to give him the best quality of life. So that was my mindset from day one was, okay, how can we fight this? How can we not be a statistic? Um, and that has never left me. And, um, and I think, you know, in the moment, having that mindset has really helped how we've coped with, with sickle cell. With our son, we're now nine years down the line. So we have nine years experience of, of living with this condition. Um, and truly, you know, it can be um, very challenging. Um, mm -hmm. It's given us many dark moments where we've wondered how we're going to get out of this um especially those times in hospital with a crisis um right. with a young child um wow it's uh, it's an emotional journey um but mm -hmm. all through everything i held on to my faith and i held on to the fact that i would research everything there was to do with sickle cell um and that we would not be a statistic one thing that stands up of course that's quite a few that stand up but one thing that stands up is that Many times people think that it's only the uneducated, the unexposed that um, that's, that don't know about their, their genotype and they, they, they feel that, oh, these people should have done the test and all that. But it's, it's um, I'm assuming you, you were in the UK when you got pregnant, right? Yes, so, correct. So genotype is not something they routinely test in a white, primarily white country. Or was it when you got pregnant when you tested? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so in other way, other times when you went to the hospital, you probably didn't know that you had a genotype. Um, you are, you are, you had, a, you had the trait. And same thing in Nigeria. I mean, it's, 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 it's mind-boggling sometimes when you see more people who, who didn't know. So, but I think that's changing now. They're beginning to say, okay, mandate genotype testing when you go to schools and when you go to, when you're attending. Going to be admitted into a school or when you're going to get married, for instance, and all those things are beginning to mandate those things. But there's still a lot, a long way to go. So, I mean, just so for people to know that this, this could happen to anybody and everybody, especially, especially if you're in a foreign country. So, people should not blame themselves, quite frankly. But um, we'll take a break now and uh, we'll be right back. 
Jason McCordy here. Devin and myself started our Tackle Sickle Cell campaign about 10 years ago and over the past decade to go towards local organizations and families dealing with sickle cell disease. It has always been a dream of ours to organize a mission trip in Africa. Project Nigeria has finally given us an opportunity to do so. With one of the largest concentrations of kids with sickle cell disease, this gives us a great opportunity to really create change. There are hundreds of thousands of little kids dealing with sickle cell, and what's even crazier is the mortality rate by age five is over 50%. This just breaks my heart, and we can do something about it. Devin and myself are gonna match. Please give and please help us create change in the sickle cell community around the world. Okay, welcome back, folks. I'm here with Vanessa Ulam, who is a mother of a nine-year-old son with sickle cell anemia. And we are talking about some of her experiences and some tips and not, not, not just she has learned through her experience taking care of her son, hopefully things that we yeah, you can apply wherever you are in the world. So you mentioned a couple of things about uh, being in the hospital and having, having to take care of your son. And I'm, I'm pretty sure in the hospital in the UK that they don't have as much experience treating sickle cell disease. I mean, what, can you run us through some of the experiences you had and what uh, some of the valuable things you learned? So it's a great question. Um, very early on, um, I was told, you know, when he's six months, he will begin to have the, the crisis. So immediately I, um, I think I rebuked it. I said, no, he, my son won't. Um, and I was just so, sure that I didn't want to see my six month old baby um, in pain. So I, I, I just um, maintained that mindset. Um, and I think I was blessed and lucky that he didn't have any pain until he was around uh, just after two, when we saw the impact and, and sickle cell showed us really what sickle cell is, you know, he was in pain. Um, and I remember we were in the hospital, he was screaming, crying. Um, he, he would not want to be left alone. I, I was holding him, you know, for nights upon end, no sleep. And um, that was when I, I felt really alone as in, because the doctors uh, struggled to get the pain under control. And, um, and when a child is so young and things like um, getting a vein for a blood test or the cannulation, you know, all of those things are, are very difficult. So um, that's when I, I felt powerless. And I think any mother would, any parent would, um, to watch a child screaming in agony and there's nothing you can do. I right, mean, right. I, you know, I can never forget that feeling. Um, so this continued, you know, he would have crisis after crisis um, where we would, and it was always in the night. Um, so we'd find mm. ourselves packing up, you know, rushing around the house in the night, running to the A&E. And then from there we'd be admitted. And the um, procedure was always the same, you know, obviously blood test to check, check the HB level, blood mm -hmm. test to check for whether there's an infection, um, you know, spleen checks, and then, um, you know, the appropriate course of, of action depending upon the results. Um, typically for Eli, it was very rarely because of infection. Um, and it wasn't ever because of spleen. Um, he just would have pain, painful crisis. And um, yeah, you didn't know what the triggers were, were for that. I couldn't identify the triggers. Although, um, you know, I live, we, we were living in the UK. We still are in the UK right now. And the weather, you know, I, when I look back, I know that around from October onwards, you know, we would have crisis in fact my birthday and his birthday falls within the winter periods and I can remember that we were never able to um, solidify any dates for any celebrations because of what might happen um, and it was always that period so um, triggers were weather you know they say extreme cold extreme heat any weather changes um, yeah, or, or rapid rapid changes in temperature yeah exactly and then um, I believe as well overexertion um, and I also believe, you know, cold water, you know, swimming, although he didn't swim, but um, I can remember some times on holiday where a trigger was, um, sorry, a crisis was triggered. Um, but looking back now, I, I truly believe that diet um, had a big impact. 
Um, so I had no idea about the fact that a child with sickle cell has um, greater than average nutritional requirements. Um, in my opinion, I think that we need to be very mindful of things like, you know, vegetable oil, sugar, you know, what we're feeding the body um, can really dictate, you know, how much inflammation there is in the body. Right. And, you know, um, pain is caused by inflammation. So I, I wasn't paying attention to any of those things. I had no education around those things. Um, so looking back, now that I've made changes to what he eats, um, I can see a difference. So, um, yeah, so I would say you asked about triggers, doctor. So uh, trigger, I think definitely a poor diet um, isn't going to help a child with sickle cell. Right, right, definitely. And I'm glad you talked about inflammation because that is an extremely important aspect that people don't talk, don't talk about like, like they should, in, in my opinion. And um, food... You mentioned vegetable oils. Somebody will be shocked if they heard you say vegetable oils because everybody thinks, well, vegetable, right? So vegetables are good for you. So if the oils from vegetables are good, they should be good for you too as well. But, but that isn't so. Why do you think that's not so? Why do you say that's not a good thing? Sorry, the opinion that vegetable oil comes from vegetables? The is opinion that, that veg vegetable oil is good for you because I, I think you were saying that veg vegetable oils and sugar and other things are not good for you. For children with sickle cell disease. So yeah. can you explain why vegetable oils could be a bad thing? Because of what it does to the blood um, and what's contained within vegetable oils. And I, I, I believe that we don't always know of the alternative. You know, you know what you know. So until somebody says, actually, this is bad for you. I mean, the same thing with sugar. I think the world is waking up to the fact that sugar isn't great for the body. Um, so, but until you know, you, you actually don't know. So, you know, there's ignorance there, um, yeah. which I think a number of people are, um, are, you know, are guilty of, but that's just the way it's been. I think now people are focusing more on, you know, health, wellness, holistic ways of living. Um, but I had no idea um, at the time. Right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing with vegetable oils is that once they get heated, obviously when we, when we fry and when we cook, yeah, vegetables oils get heated, especially canola oil. And, uh, I'm trying to remember which are the other ones that are, uh, people think are healthy. What happens is that they, the heat changes their constitution and makes them more chemically active in certain ways that can, once taken in the body, they can trigger, they can set up inflammatory chemicals in the body. And of course, these inflammatory chemicals are carried around in the bloodstream then the bloodstream that means they are affecting the lining of the blood vessels they're also affecting the red blood cells themselves which of course are where the, where the sickle cell sickle cells are and the environment in which these red blood cells is so so crucial and we'll probably talk about this in, in, in subsequent media um, episodes but the, 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 the environment that red blood cells find themselves if there's more infection in the environment in the environment if there's like you said heat if the red if the if the the channels, the arteries, the veins through which these red blood cells pass, if they are not open enough for them to move freely through and they get stuck, and again could trigger the blockage and crisis of sickle cell disease. So vegetable oils, then getting back to vegetable oils, that frying of these oils, frying and um, cooking of these things to high temperatures could cause a problem in the body that can trigger a crisis by way of inflammation. So it's, it's a good thing you brought that up. Uh, we're going to take a quick break at this point, and then we'll be right back. What's up, everybody? Devin McCordy here. I know Jason just gave you the full rundown of Tackle Sickle Cell, which we started about 10 years ago. They told you how we raised about $2 million in total, and all of this started from our family member, our Aunt Winnie, who had the sickle cell disease. And, you know, starting Tackle Sickle Cell Foundation and Campaign in New Jersey, then it's been in Boston, Nashville, Cleveland. Now it'll be in Miami as well. We've always had a dream of going somewhere else and doing a mission trip. And Project Nigeria is that. And Jay told you to give people some of the simple things we have right here in America that people with sickle cell have. So please hop on, jump aboard. Let's help make a huge difference with Project Nigeria and continue to change the life of people with sickle cell. Thank you and appreciate your support. All right, welcome back, folks. I am here with 
for me, Vanessa Lam, and we are talking about things that can help uh, your child, if you have one, with sickle cell anemia. And so uh, we were talking about, but before we came back on, on air, we're talking about things like milk and certain kinds of cereals that you've decided to modify because of what you've experienced. Can you just run us through some of those things, plus the supplements that you've also been using to help yourself? Sure, doctor. Yes, I can do that. Um, so I really focused upon what he's eating. Um, I removed sugar immediately. You know, here in the UK, we have tea, coffee, sugar. We have the jars for them. I, I, I literally threw the whole sugar jar away um, to avoid wow. the temptation. Yes. So there's none in the house. Um, wow. I did substitute that with a, a natural um, good quality honey, which he can have some. But, you know, the, the sugar addiction, and I'll say it's an addiction, I, I, I know it wasn't helpful. So we got rid of that drastically. Um, and then cereals, you know, we um, he used to take a lot of like um, Cocoa Pops or, or um, cereals that have a lot of sugar in them. So I would make sure that I had to tell him that, look, this is not good for you. This has sugar in it. We're going to have to uh, modify these things. So I went on to more of, you know, porridge, oats, for example, um, and like wheat-based um, products for his So let, let, let me get this right. You give porridge and oats without sugar and without milk? He would have it with a dairy alternative. Yes, the, the oats. And then as for sweetener, there are things like um, fruits, that I can that I add you know like strawberries blueberries um a bit of honey and he got used to that um so one of the things that I really believe is the smaller the child is you know you introduce these things from a very young age because it's very difficult when your child is seven six or seven they've been eating sugar their whole life and then you now say no more so that's where I had the difficulty. So um, anyone that I'm talking to now, if you're a, a, the parent of a child of sickle cell, from a very young age, pay attention to the diet because you won't struggle when they're older um, because they're used, to, they're used to that. It's interesting how many of the things you're saying are things that we also tell our parents of children with autism and other learning disabilities. It's oh, really? Like the exact same principles, avoid sugar, avoid milk. Avoid some of the other preservatives, processed foods, fried stuff. And I know it's hard on the kids. Oh, man, I feel so much, so, so, so much for them, especially when they see their siblings or their friends eating the same thing that they can't eat it. It's, 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 I mean, it's heartbreaking sometimes to see them go through all the pain and the, the, the grief of seeing all these things happen. But you've got to do what you've got to do. I have to acknowledge the fact that you are doing this. And those parents are really lucky to have that direction from you because I feel if I had that myself, way back then, um, things may probably would have been different different for, for us. Um, and I also feel that it's, uh, you mentioned siblings having something different. Unfortunately, this is a lifestyle change for the whole family. You can't just expect only that child to be making these changes. You know, the parents have to make the change, the siblings. So it's, it's a lifestyle family, um, you know, goal. You have to do it together. So. And, uh, and that's good that uh, you, you, you have your husband's support in this whole thing too. That's fantastic. Um, we, 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 we've kind of run out of time now, but I do want to just throw in here. I know you mentioned supplements. Uh, and we always talk about this uh, for sickle cell, especially the younger age groups. We've seen such dramatic results. Once we give higher doses of vitamin C powder now, we use, we use a powder, but then of course vitamin D and of course zinc. The three, three things you hear about or you've been hearing about with COVID-19, we've seen that they, they can make a huge, huge, huge difference, especially in the younger, the younger age group. And so I want to just encourage people that as you are making these dietary changes for your kids, also consider adding things, supplements that like that. And of course, they are more expensive immune support supplements, some of which we're going to be using for this research that I mentioned earlier on. And of course, if you want to know more about this research, uh, please go to our website, it's brainandbodyfoundation.org. And uh, we, there are too many parents and too many kids who are suffering and they're just going around and around in circles they are lost in the dark, so to speak. And I, I, for me, if, if you had had maybe an online resource that walked you through what to do and what not to do when it comes to sickle cell disease, who knows? Things would have been probably have been a lot, lot, lot better. But it's like, like it's like you had to really um, search and and figure things out for yourself. 
as much as possible. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to help change that energy. So thank you for joining us. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. And so only because of people like you that, uh, that we can do this. So thank you. With that, folks, we're going to shut this, uh, this one down and then be, be sure to stay tuned next week for our continue, continuation of this discussion with me. God bless. Stay healthy. Uh, have a great rest of the week. Bye.